This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Apple is pulling the plug on its electric car program. Bloomberg reports that the tech giant told its 2,000 employees that are working on the vehicle that it's canceling development of the EV. Many of them will transfer to work on the company's generative AI projects. Apple first launched its EV program back in 2014, and it's since invested billions of dollars into it. However, Apple's executives decided to pull the plug because they were concerned that it wouldn't provide high enough profit margins, and they were uneasy about continuing to invest in a product that may never reach the market. We also think that the slowdown in EV demand, along with the EV price war, factored into the decision as well. You know, this doesn't sound good for Aston Martin. It says it's delaying its first electric car because it can't find enough customers who want to buy it. While it's not giving up on EVs, Aston is going to put more effort into plug-in hybrids instead. It's not good news for Lucid Motors either. Aston is going to buy its batteries and electric powertrain from Lucid, which will give it some badly needed cash flow. But obviously, that will get put off for now. From a financial standpoint, Aston is losing money, but it's making progress and expects to be cash flow positive in the second half of this year. And one way it's probably going to be cash flow positive is by delaying its first electric car. It was less than a month ago that the UAW claimed that it got over 50% of the line workers at Volkswagen's U.S. plant in Tennessee to sign cards saying they want a union. And now it says it's reached the same mark at Mercedes plant in Alabama. The UAW really started its new efforts to organize the non-union automakers in the U.S. at the beginning of the year. And it will either demand that an automaker recognize the UAW once 70% of the line workers sign union cards, or it will hold a vote with workers, which would be sanctioned by the National Labor Relations Board. The UAW has been able to claim it got a majority of non-union workers to sign union cards in the past, only to see its efforts get shot down when workers voted in secret at the ballot box. But we also can't ignore the differences with the present situation. The majority of line workers haven't got the kind of raises they deserve. There's new, fresh, and motivated leadership in the UAW, and they're employing unique organization tactics. As we reported last week, the Biden administration is caving to pressure from the auto industry to roll back emission targets in the U.S. that are designed to boost EV sales. But over in Europe, automakers say they won't challenge the EU's 2035 ICE ban. Luca De Mayo, the CEO of Renault and the head of the ACEA, the lobbying group that represents Europe's automakers, said the fossil fuel ban is feasible as long as the right conditions are in place. He said the industry has already invested billions in electrification and it would be a waste to soften the regulations. But the EU has already backed off its targets. It initially wanted a full ICE ban by 2035, but several countries successfully lobbied to allow the sale of ICE vehicles that run on carbon neutral fuels after that date. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. With Toyota slashing the price of the Mirai in the U.S. by $40,000, bringing the starting price to just $12,000, Honda's picking an interesting time to introduce a fuel cell-powered version of the CRV. Made at the automaker's U.S. plant in Ohio, it features the fuel cell system Honda and General Motors developed together. Compared to the 2019 Clarity, Honda says it slashed the overall cost of the system by a third. Power also comes from a 174-horsepower electric motor that drives the front wheels, which is fed by a small battery pack. The tanks in the fuel cell CRV are a little bit smaller than the Mirai, with a capacity of 4.3 kilograms. Overall, the system provides an estimated 270 miles, or 434 kilometers of driving range, and the nearly 18-kilowatt-hour battery pack can provide almost 30 miles or 46 kilometers of range on its own. 
The battery also has its own separate charging port. The model will first go on sale in Japan this summer, followed by the U.S. before the end of the year. Beyond passenger vehicles, Honda plans to expand fuel cells into areas like commercial vehicles, stationary storage systems, construction equipment, and even becoming a supplier. Earlier this week, we reported that we might be seeing the first cracks in China's automotive industry. Netta Auto is delaying bonuses for executives, and Hi-Fi has to stop production for six months, which are clear signs that those companies are running out of cash. And now media reports out of China say that Chang'an might buy Hi-Fi. The city of Qingdao and the Saudi Arabia Sovereign Wealth Fund reportedly would be part of the deal. Qingdao, which is a coastal city located roughly halfway between Beijing and Shanghai, is where Hi-Fi has an R&D center. Chang'an builds cars for Ford and Mazda in China, as well as its own lineup of vehicles. And we think this buyout could be the beginning of the great consolidation that auto experts have been predicting in China. There are simply too many car companies with too much manufacturing capacity for them all to survive. And so, a flurry of mergers and acquisitions could be on the way. The Chinese company Huawei is famous in the West because the FCC banned the company from selling any telecommunications in the U.S. And the U.S. convinced a number of its allies to do the same thing. They're all worried about that equipment being used for spying or shutting down during a political crisis. But Huawei is also a tech powerhouse in the EV sector, and it's developing chargers that can add one kilometer of driving range per second. So a five-minute charge would add about 186 miles of range. These are liquid-cooled 600-kilowatt chargers with 600 amps. And while they're expensive to make, Huawei says they will deliver a lower cost per kilowatt hour. Elon Musk says Tesla is aiming to come out with the new Roadster next year. Of course, the CEO has made plenty of statements like this in the past, only to see those targets come and go. So we'll have to see what happens this time around. But he says that it radically increased the design goals for the new Roadster, that production design is complete and it will be unveiled at the end of this year. Oh, and Musk also questions whether it can even be called a car. Last year, Honda and GM's autonomous unit Cruise announced plans to launch a robotaxi service in Japan in 2026, and now Nissan is going to do the same thing. Starting in 2027, it plans to start providing Level 4 autonomous services in three or four municipalities, including rural areas, and it's already in talks with a number of locations. Before it launches the service, Nissan will start tests in Japan this year and expand the trials to more areas next year and 2026 with a larger fleet. In addition to Japan, Nissan is also testing autonomous cars in London and other areas of the UK. We've got one of our favorite guests coming on AutoLine After Hours tomorrow. Jeff Stout with Young Fung has great insights into future design and where this industry is headed. And we're also going to have Paul Waddy from Auto Pacific, the consultancy. So join John and Gary for the insights, analysis, and great conversation when the show gets going live at 3 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. But that's a wrap for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey and by Intrepid Control Systems. Over-the-air engineering, boost your game.